Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode 4 of 5 in our series on asteroids and asteroid mining. I bet you didn't even think there was that much you could learn about asteroids. Well, you're wrong. They're really cool. So far, we've learned about what they are, how to fight them, and if they're dangerous, how to capture them. And now we're going to learn about what happens if you do capture them. Because capturing them is hard enough, so make sure you go back and listen and watch all of those episodes. But, what do we do once we get an asteroid? How do we know which asteroids to mine? And how do we mine them in the first place? So there are a bunch of different things that scientists look for when they spot an asteroid. And when they look at asteroids and analyze them, we're going to call asteroids NEAs, or near-Earth asteroids. Scientists use ground-based infrared telescopes and spectrometers to see which minerals exist in the structure of an NEA. Different minerals will absorb light at different wavelengths. So if you bounce the right light, and you know what you bounced off of it, and pick up different light, then you know it absorbed some of it. Once they bounce the light off the asteroid, they can determine exactly what it is made of because some of that light won't come back. It'll have been absorbed or it will reflect differently. Not only do they bounce infrared telescopes and spectrometers, but they can also bounce just standard radar off of the asteroids. And that'll show them the surface features and determine the composition of those asteroids by what is reflected back. And asteroids, by the way, are never made of just one thing. They're moving and sometimes they're rubble piles, where they're just piles of rock all kind of loosely gravitationally attached. Sometimes they're solid, sometimes they're different than both of those things, or somewhere in between. There's usually a scientific debate as to the different minerals present in pretty much any asteroid. Once the composition is more or less determined, asteroids are assigned a spectral classification. Now these classifications are confusing, to put it mildly. These are separate from their letter names. So in the case of the asteroid that they might go capture, 2008 EV-5, that is separate from its spectral classification. That's just its name. So it could be an S-type asteroid, which means they're found in the inner area of the asteroid belt, closer to Mars, mainly stony. Could be C-type, which means they're in the outer main belt, they're more carbonaceous. 80% of asteroids are C-type, but they could also be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, M, P, Q, R, S, T, and V-type. And that gets confusing, I bet you can guess. In June of 2015, asteroid UW158, that has nothing to do with its type, by the way, remember, it shot by Earth. And based on the tools that we mentioned earlier, it had a lot of moolah trapped in it. It's approximately 452 meters by 1,011 meters. If estimations are correct, it could have 90 million tons of platinum in it. Only 192 tons of platinum have ever been found on Earth, so that would really change the platinum market, to say the least. It would be worth an estimated $5 trillion. U.S. GDP in 2013 was $16.8 trillion. So it's a lot. It's a lot of money, and that's just one asteroid, UW158. It came pretty close to Earth when it passed, 2.4 million kilometers. It wasn't visible to the naked eye, but UW-158 was added to NASA's Near-Earth Object Human Spaceflight Accessible Target Study, or NASA neo hats <laughs> They love their acronyms, and I love them for it. They possibly could target UW-158 for a future manned mission. While it's great to get rich or die trying for these precious minerals on asteroids, it is not the only reason to mine them. Asteroid mining isn't just for metals like platinum or palladium or gold, but it can also be for something even more precious once you get out into space, water. By mining an asteroid for water, we can break the water down into hydrogen and oxygen, which can be used as rocket fuel and as air to breathe. It would make it much more of a reality to be able to send a rocket there, collect stuff, and then use the fuel to make it back. You wouldn't have to take fuel both ways. Or you could launch from there out deeper into space using asteroids as like gas stations along the way. Sure, metal and asteroids could be mined and kept there on the asteroid, and then we can use a 3D printer to build parts and do all sorts of stuff. This is already being practiced with lunar regolith or lunar soil. At CES in January of this year, Planetary Resources, in collaboration with 3D Systems, developed the first ever direct metal print using asteroid metals. The prototype was 3D printed from an actual asteroid that was pulverized, powdered, and processed on 3D Systems' new printer. The meteorite, or you know, former asteroid, was composed of iron, nickel, and cobalt, which are similar to refinery-grade steel, so it's pretty good stuff. But depending on what is inside the asteroid, we could also mine them for other things like fertilizer, because there could be ammonia, or methane, nitrogen, carbon, which 
is all you need to do to create fertilizer. And that could be used to grow hydroponics or plants in space, you know? Fertilizer for space people to grow space food in space. It's important. Essentially, asteroid mining could not only change life here on Earth, but it could also change life for people living in space. It could be a big business for a moon colony or a Mars colony, especially Mars since it's right next to the asteroid belt, to go out, grab an asteroid, bring it back, and mine it for resources. That could change the entire economics of space. It's a huge deal, and there are companies tripping over themselves to figure this out. But the thing about this is, just because you captured an asteroid and just because you can mine an asteroid doesn't mean that that's all you can do. What about putting a person on one, right? We're gonna talk about that tomorrow on Test Tube Plus. Make sure you come back for that. Subscribe so that you get all of our episodes in this and all of our other series. Come find me on Twitter, at Trace Dominguez, and let us know down in the comments, would you be an asteroid miner? Do you think that would be a job that you would enjoy? Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time on Test Tube Plus.